The term injurious plants applies not only to those plants that can cause damage or even death as internal poisons, but also those that can yield allergic effects through contact with the allergen and birth defects if pregnant mothers consume plants containing teratogens during pregnancy. In this lesson, I'll review the role of injurious plants in human history. Human fascination with poisonous plants and fungi is long-standing, and examples can be found throughout the history of art, music, theater, and literature. Who can forget the tragic tale of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, who turned to a poisonous flower in a final act of desperation? And then there is Nathaniel Hawthorne's story of Rappaccini's daughter, situated in Padua, Italy, in which Rappaccini grows a garden full of poisonous plants. Through tending the garden, his daughter Beatrice becomes resistant to the poisons, and yet she herself becomes poisonous to others. Indeed, some of the great figures of history were renowned for their use of poisons. Agrippina, the empress and wife of Emperor Claudius and mother of Nero, used poisonous mushrooms to kill Lolia Paulina, Marcus Sianus, and her husband Claudius, among others in her political manipulations. Cleopatra tested a number of plant poisons on her slaves before settling on the asp, and she first looked at henbane or Hyosimus niger in the Solanaceae family, belladona, scientifically known as Atropa belladona in the Solanaceae family, and Strychnos nux vomica in the Loganiaceae family, the source of strychnine. But the legacy of poisonous plants is not limited to fictional stories or nefarious deeds in history. Early humans likely experienced much poisoning in their search for new sources of food. One major function of early agriculture was to select for more palatable or less bitter, less poisonous plant variants. And this process of improving upon plants in agriculture continues to this day. Food processing to remove these poisons is also important. One good example of a toxic crop being used as a food is that of Manahot esculenta in the Euphorbiaceae family, commonly known as cassava, yucca, or manioc. This starchy tuber is the main source of carbohydrates in the tropics, yet the tuber is filled with poisonous cyanogenic glycosides the most prominent being linamarin, which can release hydrogen cyanide when it decomposes. A dose of 40 milligrams of pure cassava cyanogenic glycoside is sufficient to kill a cow. And there's a report of 98 children becoming sick and even two dying in Uganda after eating flour from wild cassava that was not sufficiently processed to remove those cyanogenic glycosides. However, the traditional processing of bitter cassava, named for the higher levels of cyanogenic glycosides, and this is in contrast to sweet cassava, which has lower levels of these compounds, can be processed to remove the poison. This is achieved by scraping, soaking, boiling, and in some cases even fermenting the tuber. In the above picture, you can see me drinking a bowl of masato a traditional beverage of the Peruvian Amazon, which is made through a natural fermentation process involving starch breakdown with salivary amylase of the boiled cassava tubers. Here's another example of how otherwise poisonous ingredients can be transformed into a food. As a very young plant, this can be eaten as poke salad. However, only the young leaves should be harvested. And to prepare it, the leaves must be subjected to boiling in three pots of water, with the water being tossed out between each boiling step. This is because pokeweed, also known by its scientific name of Phytolacca americana, contains phytoagglutinins, also known as pokeweed mitogens. But these can be denatured with processing as they are heat labile. At the time that the plant is mature and fruiting, though, it is extremely toxic to humans and mammals, and no parts of the plant should be eaten, even with processing at that growth stage. The highest levels of toxicity is in the taproot, and all parts of the plant are toxic, especially when fully grown. 
Poisoning symptoms include a burning sensation in the mouth, salivation, GI cramps, vomiting, and bloody diarrhea. Even eating one berry by children or pregnant women can require emergency treatment. There are a few key messages to remember when it comes to plant ingredients. First, natural does not always mean that something is safe. There are many examples of plants that can lead to deadly consequences if consumed. Second, the distinction between what makes something poisonous versus medicinal comes down to two things, dose and intent. The dose of the compound or the plant really matters. Take for example, caffeine. Having a cup of coffee to take in caffeine can have a positive stimulant effect on the body. However, if consuming large amounts of caffeine, this can actually be quite harmful, leading to symptoms ranging from tremors, heart palpitations, and even body rashes. There are three different general groups of injurious plants, the internal poisons, allergens, and cell modifiers. But humans do have defense responses to these. In some cases, this involves liver enzymes that can break down the otherwise poisonous substance. And in other cases, the poisonous plant may be useful to agriculture due to its very pest resistance and can be eaten only following intensive processing through different human technologies, such as the use of mechanical breakdown of the food, soaking in water, or applying heat. Some poisonous plants are even useful as medicines, though it's important to note again that both the dose and the intent determine its role as a poison or a medicine. If you've ever suffered from a case of poison ivy or even seasonal pollen allergies, you've experienced the impact of plant allergens. These are due to either proteins or specific organic compounds found in certain plants and in certain plant parts. In some cases, exposure to the allergen, for example, poison ivy resin and the urochial found within the resin, to the skin can cause contact dermatitis in some people. Others may have a reaction to certain types of plant pollens, res resulting in allergic rhinitis. On the other hand, some can have extremely dangerous reactions to exposure of certain ingredients, such as children that suffer from peanut allergies, which can lead to an anaphylactic shock in some cases. Beyond the internal poisons and allergic reactions to certain plants, another group of injurious plants to consider are those with teratogenic potential. Teratogens are compounds that can lead to genetic defects in offspring if consumed at certain stages of pregnancy by either animals or humans. For example, consumption of the Veratrum genus and the Melanthiaceae family during early pregnancy, and this is both in humans and other animals, especially common in sheep, can result in cyclopia. This defect is characterized by offspring born with a single eye, often blind, and sometimes missing a nose. These are usually stillborn. The alkaloid cyclopamine is responsible for these teratogenic effects. Here you can see an example of a lamb born to a sheep that had eaten corn lily or Veratrum californicum during the pregnancy. Of note, Veratrum album has also been mistaken with yellow gentian or gentiana lutea that is distributed in Europe. In addition to having teratogenic properties, a mixture of more than 50 Veratrum alkaloids found in the plant are also responsible for internal poisonings, with symptoms appearing 30 minutes to hours following ingestion. These symptoms include vomiting, abdominal pain, hypotension, bradycardia, nausea, drowsiness, dizziness, and dilated pupils. In conclusion, there are three major ways that injurious plants can impact human health, through internal poisons, allergenic action, or teratogenic effects. As you reflect on this lesson, think about all of the different injurious plants that you have encountered in your lifetime. Have you dealt with seasonal allergies or food allergies? Have you read about any cases of mistaken identity and accidental plant poisonings in the news? Have you ever had or seen someone with poison ivy after a hike in the woods? 
The first step to understanding the risks of certain plants is to become more proficient at identifying plants in your environment. And you should never ever experiment with plants that you don't know, especially when making herbal teas or engaging in foraging activities. There are many courses available from qualified botanists to teach you hands-on plant ID. So take the time to learn from an expert. It just might save your life.